The Championship is back at its relentless best and after consecutive 3-0 defeats on the road for Bristol City, we are back at Ashton Gate for the first time since the international break and making the trip to BS3 is Oxford United, a very intriguing opposition in more than one way. We'll be talking about the U's and how Bristol City could be set up to face Oxford this Saturday. Let's talk about the opposition this weekend then and Oxford United in a little bit more depth. They're currently managed by Des Buckingham who was hired last season, middle of last season, after suddenly Liam Manning walked out the door at the Kassam to come and join Bristol City, which I'm very glad that's happened. But since then, he's had a bit of an interesting time at Oxford. Initially, the results weren't so great and Oxford started to fall down the league table in League One. But towards the end of that League One season, really got their act together, had a clear style of play and players like Josh Murphy, Ruben Rodriguez, Tyler Goodrum, Mark Harris really helped them get that promotion through the playoffs. And even when they were considered underdogs in both of their fixtures, both the teams they played against in the League One playoffs, this Buckingham masterminded his way through the playoffs in incredible tournament fashion and got Oxford to the Championship. Oxford have definitely had one of the best transfer windows in the Championship, if not the best transfer window in the Championship, with some exciting new additions. Losing Josh Murphy on a free transfer to fellow promoted rivals Pompey was a bit of a blow, but honestly, they haven't really looked too much worse off. If, if anything, they've looked far better without Josh Murphy in the team. They've replaced him and other players in the team adequately. They've already got quality within that team that got promoted from League One. But there was a sense that if they had carried out that squad from League One into Championship, it would have struggled. However, they haven't done that and they've recruited excellently the likes of Marco Mebioe, Dane Scarlett both come online from the Premier League. Idris El Mazzuni, who was impressive at Leighton Orient for a couple of seasons. And then you've got the likes of Siriki Dembele, who's done it in the Championship albeit maybe not at the same level as some other players, but have done it and have really shown their quality, especially at League One level. So a lot of promise in terms of incomings from an Oxford United perspective that have, by the looks of it, better in quite well and have hit the ground running at Kassam. Oxford started the season really well and beat Norwich City, who finished in the playoffs last season 2-0 at Kassam. Maybe caught Norwich at a bit of a good time considering the transition and whatnot over Cal Road, but followed that up with Somewhat disappointing two consecutive away defeats. They were slightly unlucky in both games, I have to admit. Two late defeats at Coventry and at Blackburn. But then after that, consecutive games at the Kassam and have won them both against Preston and against Stoke recently, which meant the end for Stephen Schumacher. But they've really made the Kassam a fortress, if only, even if it only has three sides. But they've really made it a tough place to come to. Their away form is a bit more of a concern for this Buckingham, but I'm sure if they play the same way and continue what they're doing in terms of the style of play they're pers persisting with in the Championship, they'll start winning away games as well. Oxford currently find themselves seventh in the Championship table, a whole 10 places above Bristol City, in fact, who currently lie in 17th, under Liam Manning. Liam Manning walked out on Oxford in November last year to join Bristol City in the middle of the season. And Oxford fans haven't really forgiven, forgiven him since. And if you exclude that for a moment, there's other narratives going into this game. Marcus McGuane recently joined from Oxford in the summer. There's Luke McNally, there's Rob Atkinson, there's Mark Sykes, there's Rob Dickey. There's the whole thing with Chris Hogg and Liam Manning. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of narratives. And Oxford are coming to Ashton Gate with a packed out away end in that Atio stand. And they're coming with a bit of vengeance and a little bit of asking for a bit of retribution for what we've done to them over the last few seasons. And quite honestly, I don't really blame them. And this is going to be a seriously difficult test for Liam Manning, especially if you consider the fact that the last two games have gone horribly wrong and he is under sizable pressure at Bristol City. What I mean by pressure is not, not necessarily pressure in terms of he's close to the sack or anything like that. He's under pressure to get a win quite quickly because the last two games have been really poor and Bristol City need to find a way to turn things around because we're a side this season in particular with a little bit of expectation on us, you know, to be challenging for those playoff positions, hopefully in a good in a good kind of way for us, but hasn't really worked out that way in the last two games. And honestly, the performance levels have been really, really bad as well. So there's a little bit of pressure internally from the fan base that Liam Manning gets this team selection right, gets this style of play bang on in this game, and Bristol City ultimately have to find a way to come out of 
this one with three points. Some would argue that this game is on a must-win territory for Liam Man Manning. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm pushing towards the probably that it is a must-win game for Manning. At least a must, much needed, much improved performance is definitely needed this Saturday. But it's not just that. We need to see some sort of change from the last two games. The persistence with personnel, but stubborn Liam Manning in terms of starting 11 and possibly some form of refreshment needed a bit, a little, in a few different areas. One example is Scott Twine, who started on the left-hand side in both away games recently at Derby and Blackburn. That's meant the hindrance of his own personal performance as he tends to drift inside into a more central position. But that also means Cam Pring, when he's trying to attack and go down the left-hand side, and Lee Manning himself have mentioned that the athleticism and the demands for Cam Pring is higher than for the opposite George Tanner, it doesn't really allow him to have an option in front of him that hinders his own attacking performance. So there's going to be some changes needed. What personnel are going to come in? What personnel are going to come out? You let me know in the comment section down below. I'm I'm a little bit split at the moment, but we're going to need some. We're going to need to see some changes from Liam Manning from the off. I reckon on Saturday. By no means is this going to be an easy game for Bristol City at the moment. Oxford are riding a crest of a wave under Des Buckingham, and he's getting all of his tactical decisions absolutely spot on in game and from the off. And it just looks like they're a well coached team who play a certain way, and they're not going to st stick away from it. And it looks like it's effective in the Championship right now, anyway. Can Bristol City deal with it is going to be a different problem altogether. In the last two games, especially at Derby, we were completely ran off the pitch and just out-muscled and out-fought in a lot of ways. And the midfield was just completely countered by Adams, Goodmine and Ozo. And at the moment, Bristol City just don't have an answer to teams that have a lot more run, got a lot more running in them and a lot more physical power in them than, than Bristol City do. Blackburn did a lot of the same things and Travis and Tronstad kind of just really out muscling us in midfield. The night bird Williams not really able being able to deal with it. Whether changes to that will mean something 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 different will be interesting to see. My score prediction though, despite all of that, and despite I, I do have my concerns over this Bristol defence and the ability to just keep conceding high XG chances is just ridiculous. But despite that, I am going to back Bristol with us being back Ashton Gate and having probably a better chance here than probably if it was at the Gassam. Uh, I'm going to go for Bristol City to win this one narrowly because Oxford are scoring goals quite well and are being very clinical. Harris, Goodrum, Zuni from midfield and Franigan, you know, he might not be available for this one. I do think Bristol City get back to winning ways and I'm going to go for Bristol City 2, Oxford United 1. Let me know score predictions down in the comment section down below. But that is it though. Thank you very much for watching this match preview. If you have enjoyed it, hit like. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Annie Harris Shorten Channel for more Bristol City content. In the future, I'll be there, hopefully, at Ashton Gate tomorrow, and I will be watching like this and hoping the Bristol City get over the line with three points because it is going to be a nerve-wracking day. Oxford's going to bring a lot of fans. It's going to be interesting, and the reception Liam Manning and a lot of Bristol City players, possibly, will, get, will be interesting as well. But that is all for tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, again, thank you. Uh, do all the good stuff, and I will catch you all later. Cheers.